Besides Plato, many other students studied under Socrates and went on to found their own schools of philosophy. These so-called Socratic schools flourished in the 4th century BCE and would form the fertile post-Socratic milieu of Hellenistic thought. One such thinker was a man named Euclides, who founded his own school in the city of Megara, from which the school derived its name, the Megarians. It is unlikely that this was a school or institution in the modern sense of the term, or even in the sense of the Platonic Academy or Aristotle's Lyceum, but instead a loose grouping of thinkers of varying philosophical positions. The opposite of good was regarded by Euclides as non-existent, as if one was to consider the universe as good, and that nothing could exist outside the universe, then clearly it's difficult for there to be a position for evil to arise. However, Euclides emphasised his thought, unlike Socrates and Plato, not on being and how to be good, but rather on the idea of understanding that what is opposite the good cannot possibly exist because of good's unity. One of Euclides' successors, Stilpo, continued the Eleatic line of reasoning, and saw the school evolve into a strict form of monism, with a rejection of motion and the Platonic theory of forms. However, Stilpo also appeared to have discussed ethical topics, and drew similar conclusions to the contemporary cynics, arguing for freedom and self-control. As the school matured, it became increasingly interested in logical paradoxes, propositional logic and dialectical excellence. Because of this, the school came to be known as the School of Dialecticians. The two most important thinkers from this later incarnation of the school were Philo the Logician and Diodorus Cronus. One of the key pieces of logic which the later school would focus on was conditional logic, which is the if-then relationship between a hypothesis and a conclusion. For instance, if it is light outside, then it is daytime. Philo attempted to determine which circumstances a conditional statement would be true. By his reckoning, a conditional statement was only false if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. This works in our previous example, but leads to a paradox when applied to a time-based phenomena. For instance, the statement, if it is day, it is night. In this case, the statement would be true at night and false in the day. Faced with a flaw in Philo's argument, Diodorus introduced the argument that a conditional proposition is only true if it neither was nor is possible that the hypothesis is true, and the conclusion is false. This deals with a temporal issue, but also begins to bring in the question of modality, the possibility and necessity of a propositional phenomena. That was the second important focus of the school. For Philo, possibility is only when it is a statement is capable of being true by its own nature. Necessary is what is true and is not capable of being false, while non-necessary is that which is capable of being false, and impossible is that which is not capable of being true. In this understanding, a proposition is not capable of being false precisely if its contradictory statement is not capable of being true. Every proposition is either necessary or impossible, or both possible and non-possible. In Philo's system, this amounts to the fact that every proposition is either incapable of falsehood, or incapable of truth, or capable of both. Diodorus, on the other hand, argued that what is possible is that which it either is or will be true, impossible is that which is false and will not be true, Necessary is that which is true and will not be false, and non-necessary is that which is either is false already or will be false. Once again, we see a more focused concern with regards to the temporal consistency of a proposition compared to Philo. Diodorus, in fact, developed a master argument for his system of modality, which appears to have developed from the apparent contradiction which emerged from the following statements of modal logic. 1. Every past true proposition is necessary. 2. The impossible does not follow from the possible. And 3. Something is possible which neither is true nor will be true. Being aware of this conflict, Diodorus used the plausibility of the first two statements in order to show that nothing is possible that neither is nor will be true. The dialecticians, and the Megarians more broadly, 
were not fated to be the leading lights of philosophy as the Greco-Roman world evolved, giving way to the larger schools as Greek thought spread throughout the Alexandrian Empire's former domains and into the Latin West. However, it is reported that Zeno, the founder of the hugely influential Stoic tradition, studied under the dialecticians, and their influence on Stoic logic, and Greco-Roman logic more broadly, has ensured that unlike many of the post-Socratic schools, they are still remembered to this day.